so hello guys welcome to the tutorial video on embedded systems today we will be covering the module 2 so these all are the syllabus that we will be covering in this module and i will be handling the fundamental issues in hardware software code design and today in this video we see what is hardware software code design and its fundamental issues also so in introduction in traditional embedded system approach the hardware software partitioning is done in the early stage the software group take care of the software architecture development and its implementation the hardware group are responsible for building the hardware required for the product so in this figure it is clearly mentioned that the classic design that means our initial project design is given and it is uh, split into hardware and software at the early stage and this hardware people will take care of the hardware part and the software people will take care of the software part so there won't be that much of an interaction between both these groups and the development can be either serial or parallel uh, once the hardware and software are ready the integration is performed so here after the hardware and software are ready both will be integrated together to form our main project so uh, the increase increasing competition in commercial market and the need for reduced time to market the product calls for a novel approach for embedded system design in which the hardware and software are co-developed instead of independently developing both. so here we can see that when this hardware and software are developed independently and when we integrated together there will be many bugs and errors to fix so if there is some error in hardware part and we need to fix it we need to go to the initial state where hardware is started and we need to uh, pass through all the phases which we covered to check the errors so it will be time taken and also there will be competition in the commercial market so we are using no type of embedded system design that is hardware and software are co-developed instead of independently developing both so here hardware and software will be co-developed so that will be the co-design in hardware and software so let's talk about co-design it is an embedded system design approach in which the hardware and software are co-developed. At this point of time, it is not segregated as software or hardware requirement. Instead, it is specified as functional requirement. So, it is given that uh, when the system design is given as co-design part, there, wo there won't be uh, splitting of hardware and software parts. So, we will be taking it as, a, it as a functional requirement and hardware and software will work together and we will be split it into hardware and software only at the end uh, to adjust our functional requirements the architecture design follows the system design which means that we will be getting a system design and according to that system design we will create the architecture design okay then the partition of the system level processing requirements into hardware and software takes place at the architecture design phase so in this architecture design phase the hardware and software partitioned that means this point will be the architecture phase and in this phase it will be split into hardware part and software part and we will be uh, do according to our functional requirements so each system level processing is mapped as either hardware or software and the partitioning is performed by hardware and software trade-off and to the important topic uh, of today and it will be fundamental issues of hardware software code design it's one of the most important questions uh, that's asked in university exams it, is, it will be asked for five mark questions so these four points are the fundamental issues of hardware and software code design and the first one is selecting the model from the selecting the model we will get the specification of the project and uh, the designer will select a certain model and he will be start working on it and the second one is selecting the architecture selecting the architecture is mainly for the implementation uh, part so after selecting the model uh, we will get the specification and constraints and uh, in the architecture we will go to the implementation and uh, we know details about uh, what all components are we are using and how many components we are using etc then the other one is selecting the language in selecting language we choose a certain programming language to our project uh, to uh, computational purposes the other one is partitioning the system requirements into hardware part and software part we'll be looking into that 
and let's go to the first point this is selecting the model so it is used for capturing and describing the system characteristics so the system characteristic will characteristics will be obtained from selecting the model it consists of objects and the composition rules and it is difficult to select models the designers will be uh, having so much difficulty in selecting certain models because the designer may switch between models from requirement to implementation of the system design so uh, let's consider about a project uh, so in requirement phase we are getting what all are the requirements what all are the functionality of the project and we are not getting a clear model of the project and in the implementation phase we are uh, adding components and we are knowing how these uh, operations are working so from phase to phase the designers may switch from different models and next point is selecting the architecture the model captures only system characteristics as we said earlier it captures only system characteristics so according to the characteristics our project must work so architecture specifies how a system is going to implement in terms of number and types of different components and the interconnection among them so in architecture we will find uh, the number and type of different types of components and also interconnections between them and there are different types of architecture uh, so let's uh, discuss about each of these architecture so the first one is the controller architecture in controller architecture the name as the name specifies the control of the system is uh, is observed that means uh, suppose we are having two states uh, there is a start state and also a run state so to uh, move from the start state to the run state we need some conditions so the control architecture do such kind of uh, processing and we know how uh, the project is controlled and data path architecture means it will be a certain uh, the path of the data will be noted uh, from uh, one instruction to other instruction how the data is passed and how much it is changed etc and the next one is CISC uh, it's known as complex instruction set computing so in CISC architecture uh, it is possible for a CISC instruction to uh, instruction set to perform a large complex operation with a single instruction so with a single instruction we can perform uh, larger operations and the risk is reduced instruction set computing in this method we will be using uh, many of the uh, codes uh, for representing a simple uh, operation and the next one is VLIW which means very long instruction word so uh, one standard instruction per functional unit of data path is required so we can perform uh, like ALUs and multipliers etc and the other two SAMD and MAMD this can be collectively known as parallel uh, architecture it means SAMD means we will be having single instruction with multiple data and MAMD means we will have multiple instruction to multiple data uh, both of these maps to parallel processing next one is selecting the language which means we need to select a certain programming language the programming language captures a computational model and maps it into architecture there are no hard and fast rules to specify this language should be used for capturing this model a model can be captured by using multiple programming languages a single language can be used for capturing a variety of models so i will be a uh, brief about, about this which means that the second point there are no hard and fast rules to specify this language okay we can select language according to our wish there are no hard or fast rules okay and these are two types of methods we can use in uh, selecting the language a model can be captured by using multiple programming languages so if you are getting one project and it is having a hardware part and software part the hardware part will be having its assembly coding and the software part will be having its own high level coding so accordingly there are two types of languages like hardware software languages so we can use multiple programming languages to capture one model or we can use a single language uh, for capturing variety of models so uh, if you are selecting the case of uh, game development we are using c sharp script so uh, we can use 
different types of C# -sharp script for selecting different types of games that means variety of models uh, so uh, next is our last point partitioning system requirements into hardware and software uh, which means uh, we will be having a functional requirement so we need to meet that functional requirements by adjusting the hardware part and software part uh, so we need to balance it accordingly to match our functional requirement uh, from an implementation perspective it may be possible to implement the system requirements in either hardware or software it may be possible uh, to implement our model in hardware part or software part various hardware software trade-offs are used for making a good decision on the hardware software partition so we are using trade-off method for software and hardware partitioning which will be explained in later uh, videos uh, so these are the four points which we need to learn uh, for these fundamental issues that are selecting the model selecting the architecture selecting the language partitioning system requirements into hardware and software uh, these four uh, points uh, will be uh, done in almost all of our projects and so it will be familiar for us so it is an uh, easy topic uh, to score uh, full marks so thank uh, so in this video summary we will learn about the traditional system uh, which means how the hardware and software split in early stages and what all are its problems and then we came to the core design and we uh, explained about the core design and the fundamental issues the important part so thank you